You just got a Cricut, so let's walk through part one of Cricut Design Space. Hi, and welcome back to my craft room. My name is Kelsey, I also call myself Dinosaur Mama, and today we are gonna just go through a very basic Cricut Design Space setup. So I'm gonna show you where to get the software, and then I'm gonna walk you through like the homepage and some of the side panel. I don't wanna overwhelm you with too much information just yet, and I don't want you to think like, oh, I really wanna go into a project, this is not gonna be that video, we're really just going through step-by-step Cricut design space. Now, as a heads up, I do not pay for Cricut access, and I will mention that Cricut access is optional. You do not have to pay that $10 a month or $100 a year to use Cricut Design Space. Cricut Design Space is a free app and Cricut Access gets you more SVG files and more features in Cricut Design Space. But I am here to help you find all of those things for free. There are always hacks and tips and tricks around paying for Cricut Access. All right, I don't wanna to talk too much. You'll find a bunch of links down below in the description over to my blog for more beginner-friendly projects and tips and all the freebies that I have. So start there if you need to, but let's jump in to Cricut Design Space and over on the Cricut website. So they have Design Space for Mac or Windows. And then they also have an app for your phone or iPad or your Android device. Now I am using a Mac and if you scroll down, it will show you step-by-step -step on how to download it and then also how to install your machine. Now I already have my machine installed so I can't really walk you through this process, but it is very simple step-by-step -step on how to get your machine set up either via wired or Bluetooth. So now once you have Cricut Design Space downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and open it. Now when you open Design Space, it's gonna pop up to ask you to subscribe to Access, and this is optional again, you do not have to pay. And if you wanna learn more information on that, you can look down below in the description about canceling Cricut Access or not having it. I have a whole blog post on it. Now this is the home screen and we're not gonna to go too into depth on the canvas yet. I'm gonna save that for a part two. I kind of wanna just show you how to get into Cricut and what all of this is. So they've changed this around a lot since I've gotten mine. And this is the new home screen. So they have beginner projects. They have, this goes to their store, tutorials of their own, printables are on sale. So that'll also take you to their shop, trending now, so different crafts. And then if you go over, your mystery box is going to be something that you can buy. And usually you do have to have Cricut access to get these mystery boxes. New SVGs of the week. These are going to be your artists that are making these SVG files. Graduation, we're a little bit, um, this is an odd thing. They probably just haven't updated it because uh, right now it is September. Labels, and then if you keep going, card making, paper flowers, mugs. So then it really gets into more like different types of projects. Up top, you'll see that there's vinyl decals, iron on shirts, gift tags, or you can get a blank canvas. You can gra start this here. So if you click on this, it's gonna pop you over to the canvas. And then it's gonna say, what kind of decal do you wanna make? Let's say a car decal, and then it will say what kind, what size do you want? So it's kind of walking you through, and this is great if you're new. So this actually changes the design area, and then you can start working on your project. So let's just say I wanted to make a heart, easy peasy. When I go to hit make and hit continue, now it's going to ask you for your material. So it doesn't set you up completely, but it does get you going in a great way for a beginner. Now you also can type what you're looking for here. So here are some searches or you can go to a quick link project, but also up here you'll get those same options that you see right here. So you do have that. Now images for you, I don't know why I've gotten this cat for over a year and I absolutely hate it, but it's always there. And then if you scroll down, you'll get projects, you'll get more tutorials, you'll get more seasonal stuff. So there's a lot going on just on the homepage that I'm hoping isn't going to overwhelm you. So now over on the side, okay, so right now we're like in inspiration, discover, you're going to also see my stuff. So if I click on that, these are all SVGs I've uploaded, all things that I've made. You'll have bookmarked things. So you can bookmark images, you can bookmark SVGs. So all your bookmark stuff is going to be here and then everything will be under here, all. And this is in alphabetical or order here. Now, if you go to images, you'll see bookmarks. I haven't bookmarked any images, but I will show you how to do that. These are all of my uploaded images. So these are ones that I have made or I've downloaded from like Creative Fabrica. Purchased, these are all your freebies. So I actually have never really purchased anything on here. So these are mostly freebies. And then again, all. If you go down to collections, I don't have any, but you can make a collection. So let's say you wanted to do something for like fall projects. 
And now you can add things to this. So if I went here to projects, right, and I searched fall, my fall tree, for example, now I can hit select and click on it, hit next, and then I can add it to fall projects. So now when I go to collections, there it is. Here is Cricut Access again down on the side. So you'll see I do not have it. And then it'll tell you what you get from it. I just personally think you can get this through freebies. And I use Creative Fabrica a lot. And it's a lot cheaper. It's about less than half the price. This next one down is your heat guide. It's going to kick you off. And it's going to give you all your guide for Cricut based products. So if I have the mini press, I can click on foil iron on. I can tell you I'm using a cotton poly blend. I can hit apply and it's going to tell me how low or how high I need the heat on and for how low and as well as the pressure. If you have something like the auto press, it's going to do the same thing, but it's going to give you the actual temperature. Next down here is the Cricut shop. Again, it'll kick you off and then you can shop their supplies, their deals, things like that. I don't tend to use a lot of Cricut supplies, so just keep that in mind. I usually use things like uh, Tech Wrap or I use Caesar. So I'm not the biggest fan of Cricut supplies, but if it's on sale and it's a good deal, I, I don't say don't get it, but definitely buy it when it's on sale. Now down at the bottom, you'll see two little arrows. That's just to expand that side panel we were just looking at or close it. You do have back and forward buttons up top. So if you did, you were on one page, you want to go forward or backwards, they do have that. Now we already saw some of these. So if you click on iron on shirt, let's replace it. Okay, let's say women and we'll say medium and then we'll hit create. Again, it's just going to give you that square to work in so you know the sizing, but I technically I just wouldn't do this because you can make your own template on the canvas. So now if I hit blank canvas, it gives us a much bigger area, right? And if you want smaller squares or bigger squares, right? So here we are at 100 and I'm at zero, zero. If you want to change your grid, you can always click in the corner up here. If you hit new, it's going to give you a blank canvas, but then you'll see right down here templates. And this is what I was talking about. You can grab one of these. Down below that are gonna be your projects again that we were talking about, so like inspiration, things like that. Your basic shapes will be below that, and if you scroll down, you'll get to more, but these are Cricut Access shapes. I do have all of these for free on my blog, though. You can check out the link to that in the description below. Here are the images. So if you are looking for an image to use, so for example, ghost reading a book, right? Here are some images that you can use, but again, these are paid in Cricut Access or you pay for them individually. If you don't pay for Cricut Access and you just want one image, you go to hit make. In the bottom corner, it's gonna tell you to check out and then this will pop up to tell you to pay for it. It's 99 cents usually for an image. I'm thinking some of the more like intense ones are a little bit more, so let's try like a box. Let's see if they have a 3D box. I hit check out and it's still 99 cents. So. I'm sure there are ones that are a little bit pricier, but I'm not going to sit here and search for them. So you can search here if you do have Cricut Access for the image that you're looking on. There are a lot on there and they are good images. I just, again, I don't feel like I need it. I think that there are better things out there to use. Down below that is going to be a text box, which is going to pop up a whole bunch of stuff up top. But really all you need to know about right now is these are Cricut fonts. Right, so Cricut, and these are through Cricut Access or you have to pay for them. And then you have your system fonts. These are gonna be ones that you download onto your computer or your iPad. Now you can use, do recent fonts. These are ones that you just use. And you can, of course, bookmark fonts as well that you like, so keep that in mind. Now down below that is the monogram maker, and this is a paid feature on Cricut Access. Um, I'm gonna get more into that later on as we go and learn more about Cricut. And your last button that you should know about is upload. If you're using any of my free files, this is where you're going to upload this. You're going to hit upload, upload image, and then you can drag and drop a file or you can browse. Now you might hear people talk about SVG and PNG and JPEG. So what does that all mean? A PNG and a JPEG are going to be flat images. So think of like a picture of yourself. So something that is not layered. And that's important when you're using a Cricut. An SVG is a scalable vector graphic. So that means no matter how big or small you get it, it's not gonna get pixelated like you might have with a PNG or a JPEG. Now with an SVG though, 
it's layered. And that's what we really want with a lot of Cricut projects. So here, for example, I have this ghost, which is free on my blog. I'm going to hit open and you see it said SVG. Now I'll hit continue and hit upload. And now if you go over to the side here, you'll see all these different layers. That means when I go to hit make, each one of those colors, of course all these sizing is just terrible, all of these colors are going to be on their own mat. So when we go to cut them with vinyl, you can cut it with different colors or paper, whatever you decide to make it out of. Now let me show you if I uploaded a PNG. Here, for example, this is a PNG of a fall gnome that, that I made. So I'm gonna hit continue. And now you'll see it's gonna say remove background. They do have an automatic background remover, but that again is paid. Or you can manually remove. We don't need to remove anything here. He doesn't have a background. And now it's going to give you three options. It's gonna say multiple layers, which is Cricut Access. But you'll see here, it's not really giving me a good coloring layer thing. Single layer is going to be if you want it to be an SVG, but if you see, it's just a black outline. It's like a shadow. We don't want that. But then you have flat graphic. That's what we want. It's a full color image and it's for print and cut projects. So I would hit upload and now here's my gnome and you'll see here it says print and cut. So when I go to hit make, instead of being on different layers, it's just one layer. So that is what when you're uploading a JPEG or a PNG, you're going to go through. I don't love their convert to layers option because honestly, it just does not work that well. And you could even see that in the preview. Now we're just getting started. I feel like this is a great place to just really get your feet wet. I don't really want to make a project when we first in the get go. There's plenty of different projects on my YouTube and on my blog to get you going there. But just to start, this is your really basic intro into all different parts of Cricut Design Space. I'm going to be making a part two, so make sure to subscribe and come back to see that part and ask any questions that you really feel like you've been struggling on when it comes to Cricut Design Space or if you just got your Cricut. I am so happy to answer questions. Thank you for joining me as we went over our part one of Cricut Design Space. Part two will be coming relatively soon. And I hope if you have any questions to remind you that you can just drop those down in the comments and I'm happy to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for new crafty videos and share this with one of your friends who just got a Cricut or has had one sitting in a box and needs to get it open. I will see you soon in my craft room and stay crafty.